Tricky Rainbow Beard, and I'm here with my friend Bobby the Necktie. Hi, I'm Bobby the Necktie. That's right. I um just hanging around my friend Ricky, and I like to sing songs. Do you guys like to sing songs? I hope so. <laughs> I'm glad you guys get to meet Bobby. Today we're reading a book today called Recipe. That sounds good. I'm interested. I would like to read a book called Recipe. <laughs> you got it, Bobby. <laughs> All right. So this one's actually about, oof, well, we should look at these uh, end pages. They're pretty nice. I like these. There's a lot of raccoons on this page. I think they're raccoons. What do you guys think? Does it look like a raccoon to you? I think they look like raccoons. <laughs> yeah. And this book is by Angela and Michael Ann Petrella. And the art is by Mike Bertino and Aaron Althea. That's right. That's who did it. <laughs> that is right, Bobby. <laughs> My name is Kirsten. Is that her name? That is not her name. It says that her name is Kristen. All right, yeah, I got it a little bit wrong. Okay. My name is Kristen. And yesterday, I told my mother it was time for me to learn to cook. I told her she could be my helper, but only if she would have to listen to me. I'm the boss when it's my turn, if I ask nicely. And yesterday, she said it was my turn. I wore my orange shirt, which means I'm in charge. Let's take a look at it. Look at that. Her shirt says, boss of sauce. <laughs> that is, that's what it says, Bobby. <laughs> I gave mother the list of groceries to buy for the recipe. The list was long. She approved and went shopping. This is a pretty long list. Let me show you. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at it, Bobby. Look at this recipe. It is kind of silly. She wants 20 bags of marshmallows, 400 hot dogs, a bowl, gloves, New puppy, what does that have to do with the recipe? I wonder. Grape juice, french fries, a water squirter, Cleveland Brown sweatshirt, I don't know what that is, horse meat substitute, and a helmet. What do you guys think of this recipe? It's kind of silly. There's definitely um, things I, I wouldn't want to put all together, I don't think. Mother, his, who is also known as mom, returned with almost everything I needed. I was so excited. I started to unpack my grocery bags. Let's take a look. Yeah, look at them. Oh, it looks like she got that new puppy. Oh yeah, look, there's a new puppy over there. And I see some grape juice and a lot of hearts because she's very happy. And her eyes look very happy right here. Yeah, very true, Bobby. Hmm. The next step in my recipe was clearing off the table. <laughs> this is fun. She is cleaning off the table with a broom. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it. Mom looks a little bit worried. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it either, Bobby. I think I'm with you on that. I filled my bowl with water and mom asked me to please hand the bowl over to her. She said that boiling water is very dangerous for people like me. I let her boss me just this once for the good of the recipe. <laughs> Take a look. Yeah, that looks fun. The boiling pot looks a little bit messy, but um, it does look fun. Yeah, I agree, Bobby. Next, I instructed mother to dump a bag of marshmallows into the bubbling water. I am very good at this recipe. Is that what she said? Yeah, she said she's very good at the recipe. Well, that's cool. I told her to stir this fast because you do not want the recipe goop to burn. Then I took the puppy outside to think about my next moves. Already getting a lot on the walls, it looks like. Kind of messy. That can happen when you make a recipe by yourself, I think. Yeah, I think so too, Bobby. 
Hmm. This recipe was taking so long. The puppy and I ran around outside because we needed to work some of the extra energy out of our bodies. Mom is just talking on the phone. Let's take a look. Look at that. Mom's just talking on the phone over here. And our friend Kristen is playing with her puppy. Now I kind of understand why she needed a puppy. <laughs> That's fun. While we were playing, I remembered about my hot dogs. Those had to go in the recipe too. I called to my mother yelling, hot dogs, mom, don't forget the dogs. Stick them in the goop. <laughs> I see them hot dogs up there. I don't know if you should ever really call your food you're making goop. That doesn't really sound that delicious. And I also don't know if hot dogs will make things more or less delicious. Not quite sure. I don't know if I've met a hot dog that I liked, personally. Maybe you do. Um, well, I don't know, Bobby. I kind of like hot dogs. You do? You like hot dogs? Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of prefer a soy dog myself over a, over a real, like, hot dog. But, um, but yeah, I like to eat a hot dog, especially because I like to eat the um, condiments that go on top of them. I like to put ketchup and mustard and onion. Well, those things sound not so good to me, but what do I know? I am just a necktie. That is correct. <laughs> let's get back to this book. What do you think? Yeah, I think let's get back to the book. On my shopping list, I'd written horse meat substitute. I asked mom about it. She said they only had tofu. That will be fine, I said, because tofu tastes good when you dump it into the sauce. If the, tofu, if the tofu were a real horse, it might not want to be in a pot with so much sauce. Look at that tofu horse. What do you think? I mean, probably better to eat tofu than horse meat substitute, I think. I might agree with you, Bobby. <laughs> Poor horse over there. I don't think he would want to be put in that boiling pot. No, I don't think so either. I agree. The recipe was getting very thick. It needed water. I filled the squirt duck full of water and took aim. I am very good at squirt ducks. Mom, are you watching? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that little duck-shaped squirt gun. I think that that looks really fun. Do you guys ever do squirt guns in the kitchen? Do you? I don't know. I like to do squirt guns in the kitchen sometimes. This is true, Ricky. I know this about you. Yeah, it's true. Next, we baked the french fries. They had to be crisp. Bake them burnt, mama mom. After the burnt fries were done being hot, we stuck them in the recipe, one at a time. Look at that pile of goop. I actually do think goop might be the best word for that does not look delicious. No, I agree. But you know, there's a lot of silly things in that, in that recipe. This recipe had gotten way too big for just a normal table. So we cleared the floor nice and clean. At last, it was time to eat. You gotta see how messy this kitchen is. You wanna see? I look forward to showing you. Look at that. Look at that kitchen. Do you guys let your kitchens get this messy? Maybe sometimes. Um, I don't usually cook a lot. That's usually Ricky's job. Right, Ricky? Yeah, I'm usually the one doing the cooking. And sometimes it can get pretty messy. Hopefully not that messy. Yeah. Hopefully not that messy. Mom and I put a tarp down on the floor and dumped the recipe on top. Whew. It looked like a mountain and it smelled delicious. Well, I wish I could smell it. I can't really smell it through the book. Can you, can you smell it, Ricky? No, I can't smell it. But they look pretty proud. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it had gotten pretty hard and crumbly, so we needed a chainsaw to cut it. <laughs> a chainsaw? That is ridiculous, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is pretty ridiculous. Hmm. They didn't have a chainsaw, though, so they took it outside and used baseball bats. <laughs> baseball bats, huh? Well, if you have to break your food down with baseball bats, I am not sure if it is edible anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure either. The dog tried a couple bites. Later, I saw him re-eating the same couple bites. <laughs> look at them with those baseball bats. And look at the dog trying to eat over there. Not doing a great job. Or maybe it's just way too chewy. Yeah, I think it might be way too chewy. Mom said that the recipe is perfect for raccoons. We took it into the woods and made a raccoon restaurant. Baby raccoons could come too if they want. We decided. There we go. Look at that. It's a free recipe pile, they say. I wonder if the raccoons will like it because I don't think I want to eat it even if I can't smell how delicious it is. Yeah, no. I don't know if that makes any sense, Bobby. Yeah, I don't know either. I just know that that food does not look super good to me. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> we did it! Mom and I are nature's best human chefs. Recipe is served. No refunds. There are those raccoons. Maybe they'll eat it. What do you guys think? Maybe if we turn the page, we'll find out. Let's see. Let's see, Bobby. I think we're at the end of the book. Yeah, that's the end. That's the end. We'll see. Maybe the raccoons will eat it. What do you think? Actually, the end pages might give us a clue. Check it out. Well, it looks like these raccoons definitely did some eating. That one's even wearing like a bib. What do you think? Yeah, I think that they ate it. I would say so. Yes, very much. All right. <laughs> That's the end of the book. This was a fun book. Thank you so much for reading it, Ricky. Oh, you are very welcome, Bobby. Of course, anytime. And uh, what do you say we head down to the craft studio and make something fun to go with the book? What do you guys think? I'm into that. Yeah, I want to join you too. Can I join? Yeah, Bobby, of course. You can come too. So join me and Bobby down in the craft studio. We'll be down there in a second, okay? See you there. Bye. See you there. <laughs>
it would just be a little bit shorter. Um, uh, length, that's all. Um, we will also be needing thread, which is already in the sewing machine. And we need a pair of scissors. I've got some scissors right here. I also have some really fun little scissors that look like a pelican. And I'm going to be using these to cut thread and some other little things because um, these are uh, pretty good if you want to cut really small details. And I'm going to use these to cut around the inside of the eyes. All right. And we also need a white pencil or something that would show up on black. I'm going to use this light blue pencil. Okay. So yeah, let's put that over here for right now. And let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is cut our four finger length off of this shirt. So I'm just going to kind of do one of these and cut a little mark. That's four finger length right here. All right. Now what I want to do is grab some, some of my, if you have fabric scissors, now I keep mine in this uh, sheath um, to try to keep people from using my fabric scissors for other things. But these did get used recently to cut some paper. And what happens is it makes it a lot harder to cut through fabric. So I'm just gonna cut this whole bottom of this shirt off really carefully. Now you could mark this whole thing a four finger length. I'm kind of just using my eyeballs right now, but I'm trusting my eyeballs. I might even be able to make more than one mask out of this because it's so big, such a big way around. All right, now I'll just have a slightly shorter t-shirt for someone, maybe someone a lot smaller, and then it will just have like a cool shorter effect to it. I'm gonna put that aside for right now. And then I'm gonna have to take my glasses off in order to measure this around my head. Now. I'm using the very bottom here to be my, the top of my mask. Um, mostly because it'll give you a nice straight edge that goes all along the top of your head. And that'll be the most apparent when you're making the mask. It's kind of nice though when you make something like this and you don't have to, um, you don't have to sew one of the sides. And we're not gonna sew either of the sides. We're really only gonna do a very small amount of sewing. And so I'll take this and put it around my head like so. And if you have somebody to help you here, this would be great. Great to have another set of hands because what I'm doing is I put it around my head in a way that I know it's going to be kind of tight enough. Maybe give it a little bit of breathing room too so you know it's not too tight. And then um, hold it in place. And you don't want to move your fingers because you want to mark that spot really. And so I want it to be right here. So what I'm going to do is mark with this, mark it on this side. And then what I could do, I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Then I cut it a little bit bigger than where my mark is, maybe about a quarter of an inch longer. And then this I can put aside. This could be a second mask easily. And so now I've got my whole piece here. And what I want to do is sew this together. Just a straight line that goes right here to close this up, knowing that it'll fit all the way around our head because we measured it on our head. All right. So here's the only sewing we will have to do for this project. And then we'll have to say goodbye to Zoe just so I have a little bit more room here. So when you're sewing with a sewing machine, um, you wanna get your needle in a good spot. And you could pin this in place so it doesn't um, you know, shift or too much, but I'm only sewing this little line that's only four fingers deep, so it shouldn't be that much. And so I sew a little bit and then I go in reverse like this and it locks the stitch in place. Um, you don't really need to make a knot when you're sewing if you make a knot right into the fabric. And the way to do that is to sew one direction and then sew in the other direction. I'm doing that to close the loop at the end as well. All right. Cool. Now we have our sewing done. I'm going to check to make sure that this fits on my head 
before I put Zoe away. What do you think? You think it'll fit? I hope so. All right, that's going to be perfect. Okay, and we could say bye to Zoe. Zoe, thank you so much for your help. Um, I guess literally, thank you so much, which I guess is pretty funny, but bye, Zoe. All right. Do you fit under here pretty nicely? I think so. Got a little spot for you right there. Okay. All right, now I have a nice fresh surface to work on. So it is hard to work um, with a sewing machine on the table with you, unless you have a way bigger table. So I've got that set. I can put my glasses aside for now. Put this mask on. And hopefully you don't have to deal with as much hair as I do. I have to move my hair out of the way. Okay. I think that's a good spot. So what you want to do is kind of feel for where your eyes are here. And again, this would be a great thing to have somebody else help with as well. And so really lightly, you want to just mark this with a little bit of a cross on one side and then go as much around your eye socket as possible. Now you might not be able to see these lines too much, but the more of a white pencil you have, the better you'll be able to see it. And you could use white chalk as well. All right. Okay, now I have my two eye holes. You know what? They don't look that bad either. Here, let me hold them up. Right there, you can kind of see them a little bit, I think. Right? Okay, so when I cut these out, I'm going to use these careful little pelican scissors. They're actually for doing applique, which is something we're not going to talk too much more about today. But, uh, but it allows you to cut something you'd sewn onto a piece of fabric really close to the edge. That's what's good about these, is that you can cut really close to an edge and not cut into another fabric. It sort of has one really sharp pointy side and one like kind of beveled edge side to keep you from cutting the fabric you don't want to cut. As you can see, I'm just cutting carefully around that circle that I drew. And this should be a big enough hole to be a pretty good raccoon mask. Right. And what's nice about drawing the little crosses is that you can sort of fold your fabric, cut into it, knowing that you're cutting straight into the hole that you need to and not cutting any further than that. And you don't have to use a t-shirt to make a mask like this. But what's nice about using a knit fabric like a t-shirt fabric is that it doesn't unravel. Not easily anyway. Um, or it doesn't produce really frayed edge. You can cut it without having to sew it. Um, another fabric you could do that with would be felt. Felt is a really forgiving, easy to work with fabric because it's pretty stiff. Um, definitely easier to work with than the knit fabric of a t-shirt. But I thought, hey, if you've got some t-shirts lying around, you might have that easier than you have some felt. So let's test this out and see if our mask worked out just right. Okay. Well, it's good because I feel like I can really see out of it. All right. What do you guys think? Do I look like a raccoon? <laughs> Maybe we should show our friend Bobby. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's show Bobby. Bobby's just right here. Right? You don't mind? Let's get him out. Okay. All right. So you remember. We just read the book together, and I told him that he could come see the craft as well. Right, Bobby? Oh, yeah, you said I could come see. I did come. I did tell you that, right? What do you think of my raccoon mask? I barely recognize you. You do? You barely recognize me? Yeah, you look kind of like a raccoon. All right, cool. I guess it worked. Bobby thinks so. Yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Well, thank you so much. Um, what do you think we should do now? 
Well, it's that time of the show, right? Yeah, it's the time when we, um, we do what? We dance for a minute, right? Yeah, we dance for a minute because it's scientifically proven that if you dance for one minute every day, that's one minute of your day that you're dancing. That is correct. You're right. So what do you want to do? You want to do a countdown? Yeah, let's do a countdown. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Hit it! <laughs> 